Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another sculpting video. In this one, I will be sculpting one of your requests that you've been asking for for a very long time. I will be sculpting an imp or a goblin fairy. So like I said, I've received a lot of requests for a creature like this, and it's finally here, and I actually ended up creating him in a different composition than what I normally do, so I'm really excited to show you that. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses that cover dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. A premium membership will give you unlimited access so you can enjoy whatever courses and communities you like that are just right for you. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can click the link at the top of the description description box below to get your first two months of Skillshare for free. So whether you're looking to learn some new skills, build on skills you already have, or even grow within your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to go. The classes that I'm personally drawn to are the project management courses because I always have so much going on. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know this is true. One of them that I would like to share with you now is Project Management in Real Life by Nikki Henderson. Some of the courses she has are about setting goals, creating a plan, setting a schedule, and so on and so forth. So it's super Super helpful. Did I mention that Skillshare is super affordable? An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So don't forget, if you want in on this offer, click the link at the top of the description box below to join Skillshare and get your first two months for free. Now, without further ado, let's sculpt this imp or goblin fairy or sprite or whatever you want to call it. Let's go. All right, first step, armature. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now I want this imp to be hanging from a curved stand that looks like some sort of mystical looking tree branch. So now the first thing I got to do is make that stand. And to do this, I'm shaping out the structure with aluminum wire, making a circle for the base and then arching the wire upwards in a sort of question mark shape and then hooking it at the end. That's where he's going to hang from. And then as you see here, I'm just filling everything in with some aluminum foil and making it the shape that I want. And then of course, we're just holding all of that together with some masking tape. Then we're gonna bust out some Super Sculpey Original. Haven't used this stuff in a while. I'm just gonna cover the entire thing in that. And then I'm not gonna be super worried about the surface being smooth. I actually like the texture that I'm getting from the aluminum foil. So we're just gonna kinda work with it, not against it this time, because I want this to be a very organic, natural looking texture. Now to make the surface look a little more bumpy and uneven, I'm just adding some random pieces of clay here and there, blending them in with everything else, just to give it some more depth. Now to put a nice base texture on this thing before we go any further, I'm just using a ball of foil, like so, pressing it into the surface to make it nice and rough. It's super easy and super effective. Now that we have that done, I thought it would look cool if I added a couple rocks all over the place at the bottom here. So I'm just shaping those out with my fingertips and pressing them on like so. There's really no technical way to describe how to do this. I'm just pressing them every which way until I get a shape that I like. And once those rocks are looking pretty good, we're going to go in and further the texture on everything using a toothbrush. Now to take this even further, I'm going to add some vines all over the place on it. And to make the vines, I used a snake of clay that I rolled out. I textured it with the back of my spoon tool, twisted it a little bit, and I'm just going to swirl it around the base. Then I'm going to repeat this process for a couple more vines, but being careful not to overdo it. Then to create some more interest, I'm just gonna add some shelf mushrooms around the base here and there until I get it to a point that I like. Now for the final details on the base, I'm just gonna add some regular ground mushrooms. And as you saw there, I just added a little hole where the base of the mushroom is going to go, filled it with some bacon bond for security. Now I'm rolling out a snake of clay for the base of my mushroom, cutting it to size with my Excel blade. Don't forget you can use code ACEOFCLAY at excelblades.com for 15% off your purchase. Now we're just making the mushroom cap, adding some bacon bond to the base, and then attaching the cap like so. And that's looking pretty good. 
Let's make a couple more. Now I'm just going to add a couple more shelf mushrooms here and there. Detail those. Nitpick everything a little bit. That thing's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Wow, check it out. All right, now it's time to start the armature for the imp. And to do this, I'm doing it like I do with any other armature that I make for a body that has two legs and arms. And I'm just shaping it out with aluminum wire on a smaller scale, of course, and then connecting the arms to the body with some floral wire. Normally I would use masking tape for this, but it's so small I'd rather just do it this way. Once we have the wire done, it's time to bulk out the torso with some aluminum foil. Then once that's done, it's time to cover it in clay. Because this is a smaller figurine, I'm going to use Super Sculpey Firm just to make it a little easier to handle without smashing it easily like if I were to use Super Sculpey Original or Medium Blend. Alright, and then of course, once the torso is covered, it's time to cover the legs and arms in clay. And I'm just shaping those out using my spoon tool and fingers. And then quick tip while I'm doing this right here, always shape out your armature into the final position before you add the clay. If you try shaping it when the clay is added, you're just gonna smash it and have to start over. Once the arms and legs are at a good spot, we're just gonna finish off the shoulders and the back. And there we go, we're getting somewhere. Kinda looks like a baby. Now we're just going to add some extra details with my explorer tool and spoon tool like so, just shaping out the pectorals a little bit. And then just nitpick everything until we're ready for the next step. Then we can't forget the belly button. Once I have the body to a decent point, it's time to start the wings. This is attempt number one. I don't know what I was thinking, I don't know why I thought this would work, but I left it in just so you could see the entire process. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. On to attempt number two. So that I don't have bulgy wire sticking out from under the clay, I'm going to use floral wire as the structure for the wings now. But we're gonna shape them a little bit differently. Now since this imp is going to be evil, I just want to give him some evil looking wings. So I'm just giving them a nice jagged edge, like so. Then I go in and texture the surface of the wings with my color shapers and explorer tool. That's looking good. All right, now we're gonna jump back to the body and give him some nipples really quick. Now we're gonna add the neck. Woohoo, he's coming along. All right, next step, loincloth. All right, the body is pretty much done, so now we're just gonna jump and make the head really quick, and I'm just covering my ball of aluminum foil like so, and then adding a toothpick to hold on to while I sculpt the face. Now I'm just pressing out the eye sockets with my large ball stylus, like so, smoothing them out a little bit with my fingers. And 
Now we're just adding two little balls of clay for the eyes. And then we're going to add some upper and lower eyelids. Once the eyes are looking pretty good, it's time to add the brow bone. And this is just a snake of clay that I'm shaping out like so and blending in with my spoon tool. Alright, now we're going to shape out the mouth area and I'm going to start it with my double-ended burnisher from Excel Blades like so, just pressing it in, then using my spoon tool to finish it off. Now it's time for the nose. I just shaped it out roughly in my fingertips, added it like so to see how it looks, and then I'm using that double-ended burnisher again to blend it in. Now that the base of the nose is shaped out and blended in, it's time to add the nostrils. Now I gotta shape out the tip of the nose and finish everything off. Now we're going to give him a nice, wide, creepy grin, and I'm just using my Explorer tool to shape it out. Once I've established the shape of the smile, I'm just going back in with my Explorer tool again to press in the teeth. Now for one of the last details on the face, I'm just going to give him a little chin. Now for a couple wrinkles here and there. Then I'm going to use my ball stylus to add a little bit of a texture to the nose, cheek, and forehead, and chin. Now for his ears, I want them to be really long and pointy, so I'm just making this teardrop shape and shaping them out like so. I left all of the footage in for the first ear so you can see how I do it. There we go. Not bad. After doing the second ear off camera, it's time to finish off the loincloth by adding a little texture using my Explorer tool. A little quick cross hatching texture does the trick. Now to attach the wings, I'm just poking a hole with my Excel pin tool like so, adding some bacon bond and then poking the excess wire at the end of the wings into that hole like so. And then shaping out the wings to get them to a point that I like. Then once the wings are done, I do add a little hook, an eye pin to be exact to the top of his shoulder so that I can attach him to the base with some wire so that he hangs there in the end. Then brush it with clay softener to remove fingerprints, bake it, 
And now it's time to make his hands and feet. And that first hand is way too big, so let's try that again. To make the hands, I cut the fingers out of an oval shape, round them with my fingers, and then attach the thumb and ball of the hand as one piece and blend that in. Like this. And then again, I left all of the footage in so you can see how I do it. After adding some wrinkles here and there, I'm going to give him some claws or long pointy nails and I'm just attaching those with some bacon bond. And then I just attach the hand like so. Then once I make the other hand off camera, it's time for the feet. And you'll see here the process is very similar to hands except instead of long fingers you make toes. Once everything is shaped out for the foot, I just add some pointy nails to it as well to finish it off. And then I attached it like this and then made the other foot off camera and that's looking pretty good. All right now once our base and imp are baked and completely cooled down it's time for paint and I'm starting with the base using some folk art brown to give everything a nice first coat. All right, then once that base color is completely dry, I'm just going in and antiquing everything with the dark brown I made by mixing a little bit of pure black with my brown color. And water, of course. So this is a wash and I'm just brushing it on the surface and dabbing off the excess with a paper towel. Once the first antiquing process is done, I'm just gonna go in with some folk art green meadow, lightly over the entire surface to give it a nice green tint. Then once the first green layer is done, I'm gonna lighten everything up by mixing some warm white, grass green, and lemon custard together to create this nice bright green that I'm gently dry brushing all over the surface. Then to give this some more color dimension, I'm gonna go in with some Folk Art Grotto, which is this nice robin's egg blue color. I'm just going to add that sparingly all over the place. Don't wanna overdo it. Now we're gonna do the same thing with some red violet. At this point, I was so happy with how it was turning out. I loved how the grotto and red violet looked over the green and brown. Now we're going to paint those shelf mushrooms using Folk Art Buttercup, this nice warm yellow color. Then we're going to go in and antique this once this coat's dry and then dry brush it with some warm white to bring out the details. Then once our shelf mushrooms are looking good, I'm going to go in with some folk art boulder to paint the stems of the ground mushrooms. Then I'm going to go in and paint the mushroom caps dark brown and highlight them with light brown. Now it's time for the rocks. To get this gray color, I just mixed some pure black and brown with that boulder color again just to darken it a little bit. Then I darken the other stones a little bit more just so they're not all the same color. Then we're just gonna dry brush some light gray over those to bring out the texture. And I love this process. I always love dry brushing highlights. Now we're gonna use that light green color we made earlier to add a thin layer of moss on the top of every stone. Nitpicking things a little bit here and there. Adding a couple spots to the mushroom caps. Now for a final detail, I'm gonna go in with some Folk Art Color Shift green flash paint and just dry brush it sparingly all over the place to just give it a little bit of a sparkle. And then I'm just gonna go in and darken some areas with some more antiquing and the base is done. 
Now for this guy. We're going to go in with two coats of green meadow for the base color. Then once the base color is dry and looking good, we're just going to darken some areas with a dark green wash that I created using Green Meadow again with some pure black. Now we're going to add some highlights using that bluish grotto color. This worked really well with the green base tone. After the first layer of that, I just lightened it a little bit more with some warm white. And then highlighted everything even more. Next, we're going to paint the nails black. Then the next step is to paint the eyes. I decided on this nice bright yellow color and no pupils or irises. Now we're going to paint his teeth. Just a couple strokes of darkened warm white. Now for his clothes, we're just going to put a base color of brown on there and then we're going to dry brush some lighter brown later on. And then to blend all of the colors together, I'm going over everything with that same green highlight color just watered down to create a wash. This really helped to blend the colors together and make it look a little less dusty, if that makes sense. Then we're going to paint the wings black because we're going to go over the top of this with some color shift paint. And this color is purple flash. Then once the wings are done, I hang him from the hook on the base with a little bit of floral wire. And he's done! Our imp or goblin fairy is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like how the imp turned out. Thank you so much for requesting him. He was a lot of fun to make. The music for this video was provided by Tiff Music. I will link his YouTube channel and his Patreon down below, so please check him out. As always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next one.